Hi guys. You probably thought you had gotten rid of me, but it is Friday the 13th. Well, close enough. Uh, Friday, November 13th. So it is your lucky day. Your lucky Friday the 13th that uh, I have returned to Collapse Chronicles. This is Sam Mitchell. The little dog is uh, asleep in the trailer where we have washed up in the Point Lonesome Swamp uh, outside of Inverness, Florida here. We somehow survived, uh, you know, Mad Max and Civil War and uh, Martial Law. All of, all of this is still up in the air. Don't get me wrong, I, I have not completely uh, pulled the plug on Mad Max and Civil War and Martial Law, but it seems that the, uh, that the big blow has blown over for now when we have a little bit of calm. Hurricane Etta blow, blew through here last night, and so we have some relative calm. So I am back again. I am very busy with my life, guys. I don't know how often I will be uh, coming to visit. Not as often as I would like. I just did a rather uh, push the envelope video about why you're not seeing any more interviews here on Collapse Chronicles. So watch that video if you dare. But uh, since it is Friday, is this the first time in three weeks? I, I think the last, isn't the last chronicle of the collapse I did <clears throat> from Bugs in a Jar Farm up in Ithaca, New York? I think, was that three weeks ago? We have missed two of my ecological meltdown roundup rants. And uh, so we're going to get back to business here on Collapse Chronicles for our Friday the 13th uh, edition of my Ecological Meltdown Roundup Rant. We're going to go over and uh, check in with uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there uh, at mongabay.com for their weekly laundry list of how this planet is heading into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour while we are <clears throat> distracted from the distraction of the distraction. What's going on on the rest of the planet? One year on, insects still in peril. Do you think so? Uh, this is reminding a year ago I spent a lot of time talking about this uh, this four-part uh, report from Manga Bay's Jeremy Hance on the insect apocalypse. Uh, so that was 16 months ago. So Jeremy Hance has gone back and interviewed uh, seven of the 24 uh, entomologists uh, that he interviewed 16 months for an update of the insect apocalypse. Okay, he finds much bad news. Hmm, butterflies in Ohio declining by 2% per year. 94% of wild bee interactions with native plants lost in New England and grasshopper abundance falling by 30% in a protected Kansas grassland over 20 years. I think those grasshoppers turned into locusts and flew over to Africa. Scientists say such losses are not surprising. What is alarming is our inaction. One researcher, who's not named here, concludes, 
real insect conservation would mean conserving large whole ecosystems both from the point source attacks and the overall blanket of climate change and six billion more people on the planet than there should be. There you go, finally some honest reporting. Yes, real insect conservation would be getting rid of about six billion humans. Although, of course, real everything conservation would mean getting rid of 8 billion humans. There are 8 billion hum more hu people on the planet than there should be. I would change one word in that s sentence from 6 to 8. Okay, we do have some good news on Friday the 13th. An oil palm plantation being converted into a rainforest. There you go. Finally. All right. But uh, while a tiny little patch of uh, oil palm plantation is being converted into rainforest, wow. Just draw some dots between China and Senegal. This is the Belt and Road Initiative at work. Chinese demand and domestic instability are wiping out Senegal's last forest. After a decade of intensive illegal logging, endangered rosewood trees are becoming increasingly rare. Yes, in Senegal's southern region bordering Gambia. Despite logging its own rosewood to extinction years ago, the Gambia has become a major trading hub for rosewood and was China's third largest source of the rare valuable timber in 2019. So even though there is not a single rosewood tree left in the Gambia, uh, they're just selling Senegal's rosewood trees to the Chinese. Uh, an investigation has revealed the rate of trafficking across the border has worsened over the past two years despite an export ban. Yes, do you think so? Okay, you will not believe this for, for anybody who does not understand the banksters behind it all, in case you're new to the Doomosphere, let Manga Bay explain this to you. Brazilian and international banks are financing global deforestation. I never would have thought of that. Thank you, Manga Bay. According to a new report, some of the world's biggest Brazilian and international banks invested over $153 billion in commodities companies whose activities risk harm to forests in Brazil, Southeast Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa since 2016 when the Paris Climate Agreement was signed. Wow. These investments were made primarily in forest risk commodities companies that include beef, soy, pulp and paper, palm oil, rubber, and timber producers. Yes. The big banks are failing to scrutinize and refusing and refuse loans to firms profiting from illegal deforestation. Do you think so? Uh, the Bank of Brazil offered $30 billion in credit since 2016. Uh, for forest risk commodity operations. More than half of that went to the beef sector. Yes. 
Uh, okay, so Manga Bay, you know, has a YouTube channel. So this week, their own YouTube video of the week is titled Dying Language. Bello Monte Dam threatens indigenous lifestyles in Brazil. Do you think so? I think the Belmonte Dam has obliterated indigenous lifestyles in Brazil. Okay, we have a C word uh, article. Imagine that. More news about the months long closure of national parks and continued travel restrictions due to the corona panic has disrupted a critical revenue source for great ape conservation. Do you think so? Uh, this is how, you know, once again, well, we've been hearing this story for six months from Manga Bay, but nowhere else talking about, uh, in, well, in this case, how the corona panic is just gutting uh, the conservation of great apes uh, as money is completely dried up. Anyway, uh, moving on from the C word. Okay, here is another uh, absolutely startling headline from Manga Bay that I never would have thought of without Rep Butler explaining this to me. Palm oil giant accused again of illegally burning Papuan rainforest. Yes. An investigation based on satellite imagery has concluded that palm oil giant Corindo Corporation deliberately set fires to clear rainforest in Indonesia's Papua province, which, you know, we most of us know as New Guinea is where we're talking about, is where New Guinea uh, is being completely destroyed, it is being literally torched, literally torched <coughs> to make way for more palm oil. Uh, the finding is just the latest allegation of illegal burning by Corindo, yes, which is accused of having cleared a Chicago-sized area of rainforest. Um, yes. The company accuses nearby villagers of setting the fires. Yes, I bet they do. Uh, okay, I'm not going to, I, 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 I'm not going to insult my intelligence and yours with, uh, the, the hopium stories. Uh, you'll have to go over to Manga Bay for your own weekly dose of hopium. Okay, but let's get back to reality. <clears throat> Entangled, how a global seaweed plague threatens West Africa's coastline. For nearly a decade, vast quantities of sargassum seaweed have been washing ashore on either side of the Atlantic. Imagine that, you know, this sargassum weed latest thing, uh, taking out underwater ecosystems. Um, the plague may be linked to wind and ocean currents shifted by climate change, and not to mention the nutrient-rich discharge from the Amazon and Congo rivers. Uh, the seaweed comes from a new perennial algae, perennial bloom that may be a permanent feature now of the Atlantic Ocean. Good Lord. 
All right. Again, thank you, Manga Bay, for explaining Doomosphere for Dummies. <clears throat> As energy needs drive demand for minerals, forests face greater threats. Wow. Rising demand for energy, especially from renewable energy sources. Rising demand for energy, especially from renewable sources, looks set to increase pressure on the world's forests, as many of the minerals used in solar panels, wind turbines, and battery storage are mined in sensitive forest areas. Wow. Uh, yes, I love this. A World Bank concept called Forest Smart Mining. You know, leave it to the banksters behind it all. <laughs> Forest Smart Mining claims to mitigate the negative impacts of mining in forest. But given the complex nature of the extractive industries, you know, complex nature, bulldozing down millions of acres of forest, it's called overburden. The name for it is overburden. The, the very, it's very complex. You get chainsaws and bulldozers and you, do, and you obliterate thousands of acres of forest off the face of the planet so you can do your little green New Deal energy. You know, your little solar panels and wind turbines and crap like that. Just get rid of that pesky overburden, otherwise known as our planet's forest. Yes, given the complex nature of the industries, its real-life applicability has come into question. Yes, uh, experts emphasize that only a radical reflection of human energy consumption can bring real change. Imagine that, that your little solar panels and your wind turbines and all the rest of that Green New Deal crap are just a way to, you know, to keep this uh, unsustainable civilization going. You know, we need to reduce consumption, and one way to reduce consumption is to reduce the number of consumers. What was he saying about six billion people, too many people on the planet? Another way. All right, again, we have never heard this story before in a Manga Bay roundup, never. Road paving project. Project threatens a wildlife-rich reserve in Indonesia's Papua. Again, we're talking New Guinea. The Indonesian government plans to pave a stretch of highway running through an ecologically important wildlife reserve. Hmm. Experts warn the paving will encourage even greater encroachment into the Mambaramo Fojo Wildlife Reserve, which is home to at least 332 species and 80 mammal species. Yes, another section of the Trans-Papua Highway was constructed through Lawrence National Park earlier this year, and studies show it is already having an impact in terms of increased deforestation. Do you think so? So, what is going on with the uh, North Atlantic right whales are now down to fewer than 366 
remaining individuals which you can kiss goodbye. These 366 surviving whales face two main threats, fishing gear entanglements and ship strikes, otherwise known as the threat of humans. Um, let's see. I love this. Honoring children and protecting the planet. We're going to move ahead to that. Uh, would you believe that a Philippine resort owner has been hit with environmental crime charges? The owner of two resorts on the Philippine holiday island of Boracay has been arrested for violations of the country's environmental laws. I had no idea that the Philippines had any environmental laws. Huh. This is news. Yes. Um. Anyway, where are we? Uh. Let's see. Good Lord, guys. What's going on with the fire season wrapping up? Okay, let's get a wrap up on the fire season in Brazil. As fire season ends, Brazil cited for failed Amazon and Pantanal policies. The Brazilian Amazon saw devastating fires from August to October 2020 while the Pantanal wetlands suffered losses of 28% of the entire wetland biome. Critics contend that Jair Bozo Nero's Amazon Council and the Brazilian Armed Forces sent to the Amazon, you know, allegedly to combat deforestation and this year's fires failed to perform either task. Yes, meanwhile, Bozo Nero has made more major cuts to the nation's two already funding strapped principal environmental agencies. Yes. Um, millions of dollars in funding earmarked for, you know, controlling deforestation was spent on military barracks improvements at bases located well outside the Amazon region. Do you think so? Uh, anyway, there you go. Another devastating year of fires. I guess uh, they're winding up in Brazil and cranking up in Australia, I'm just guessing. Alright. Um... Anyway, more hopium. Okay, what's going on up in the Arctic? Uh, you know, Manga Bay spends most of its time down in the tropical forest, but every once in a while they peek up there at the Arctic. A warming Arctic is changing animal migrations. The newly launched Arctic Animal Movement Archive includes 28 years of terrestrial and marine animal tracking. Um, the Arctic is now undergoing some of the most rapid climate change on the planet. The resulting warmer winters, earlier spring snowmelt, and the loss of ice are affecting animal movement. I imagine they are, uh, and it's not just polar bears, it's also caribou, wolves, golden eagles, 
uh, and of course bears. Um, there you go. Hi. Now here's somebody I have never seen mentioned in a Manga Bay Roundup, and that's the Mennonites. I never can keep the Mennonites and the uh, Amish separate. I think the Mennonites are a little bit more modern than the Amish. Peru prosecutors probe Amazon deforestation linked to Mennonite communities. Satellite images show a sudden surge in deforestation in areas settled by Mennonite communities in uh, the edge of the Peruvian Amazon. Um, these cases are among instances of large-scale forest loss that has occurred in the Peruvian Amazon. Do you think so? Prosecutors say the clearing was unpermitted and illegal. A lawyer for the Mennonite says they have complied with an injunction against forest clearing. Yes. So the Mennonites. You don't think of Mennonites as being planet eaters. All right. We just looked at the Arctic. Let's go to the other end of the planet. Frustration is Antarctic Conservation Summit Summit fails to declare marine sanctuaries. A proposition to establish three new marine protected areas uh, was not approved at a recent meeting of the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources. Yes. Uh, imagine that, uh, that failure, uh, let's see, what's going on in Uganda? Uganda Environment Authority green lights clearing of Bagoma Forest. Do you think so? Sugarcane companies have begun clearing land within the Bagoma Forest in Uganda after gaining title to the area under controversial circumstances. Yes. Uh, do you think so? A forestry official says the case is emblematic of similar claims being filed over land in other environmentally sensitive areas across Uganda, I bet. Uh, part of the disputed land in the forest is considered a key area for conservation home to chimpanzees in manga bays, huh? Not manga bays, manga bays. So, all right, guys. Uh, anyway, I could I could go on with this, but we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it there with the uh, chimpanzees in the manga bays, and uh, I've got a lot on my plate tomorrow. I've got to. Uh, do my own bit of planet eating in a cypress grove in uh in Florida uh siding a shed with uh cypress lumber culls which were they're just going to be shredded chipped and shredded so I am siding my new sh shed with dead cypress Trees, you know, it's hilarious. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of, uh, you, you know, uh, working out here and, and how the state of Florida is all concerned. You know, if you're an individual homeowner 
and you want to like put in a dock or something that you have to get all of these permits uh, if you if, if you want to cut down a cypress tree yet you can go down to peanuts sawmill anytime you want to and see thousands of, of cypress logs you know it's like uh, I, I I was talking to uh, this uh, game warden today about gopher turtles and uh, you, you know about how individual citizens in Florida and homeowners they, they get and they get thrown through all of these hoops uh, before you're allowed to build you, you have to take a gopher tortoise survey on your property to make sure you're not endangering a gopher tortoise, which is fine and dandy, but then what they do is they ram another freeway right through the heart, the very heart of the most critical gopher habitat. Uh, I mean, completely obliterating uh, every gopher tortoise uh, in a hundred mile long, uh, half mile wide corridor of destruction, uh, that's fine in the eyes of the state of Florida. But if you're an individual homeowner, you know, wanting to, you know, whatever, you got to go pay some gopher turtle guy a thousand dollars to come and uh, make sure you're go you're not harming gopher uh, habitat on your property. The, the level of hypocrisy from the state of Florida, uh, you know, to everywhere else on this planet. Anyway, I'm rambling. Get out there and enjoy your gopher turtles before they're all run over while you still can. My guys.